Hi, this is Frid from the Diet of Syntax and English in Colour. And I have the great honour and privilege and joy to be talking to Jen Barbado. Hi, Jen. Hi, Frid. <laughs> she um, agreed to do an interview with me. She is a designer and an artist, a vegan activist and a mom. And I met her at the end of 2016. Was it 2016? I think it was December of 2016. Mm -hmm. Uh, I found her in B-School. We both went through Marie Forleo's B-School and she presented a little picture book that she had done for her daughter. And I thought the book was adorable and I thought her vibe was adorable. So I contacted her and asked her for two things. I was just very new in the business world and I wanted to have a logo and I wanted to have a cover for a book that I wrote. <laughs> and so uh, Jen started out making a, a beautiful um, round circle for me with my initials in it. And then she made um, a beautiful logo uh, for a website that I now don't have anymore. <laughs> and she's gone on to make more, many more beautiful things for me. And then she designed the cover for my, anim my first animal rights essay. And I think it is, beautiful i think the cam my camera doesn't do it justice but you can see it and it even has a back to it <laughs> and yeah and then quickly we became friends and whenever i i need something for my joy of syntax platform and i would like you i'll put the link below and you can check out her work on her website and my and her work on my website i think jen you are a wonderful designer and well, uh, in the course of all the beautiful things that you've done for me, I have, well, grown to love you. And I think of you every day because every day I have reason to look at my website and at stuff. And before I get let you talk, I want to show off all the things you made for me. Um, um, Jen has a red bubble shop and she put she started putting my business logos on stuff so today i got this beautiful tote bag and this is my the business logo for my joy of syntax site that goes with my book and then i got a bigger bag like this this is um something that i designed it's called a, uh, in german it's called it, it's german and it says a German sound alphabet, um, an English sound alphabet, sorry. And it's a whole program that I'm offering for speakers of German who want to learn English. And uh, my English in color designer made the logo and then Jen put it on this bag. So then Jen organized these beautiful stickers and this t shirt. <laughs> and last but not least, a cup so the wonderful thing is that not only will jen design your create your website design your logos make your covers or whatever you want she'll also put it on 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 stuff for you so you can have your merchandise around your brand and that brings me to the first thing i wanted to talk about with you if you don't mind um you're a vegan i am a vegan and we discussed that brand and branding is actually not a nice word to use. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, yes. Well, um, when I think this happens to a lot of people, when you first become vegan, there's like you're living in like a small world where you're just learning about the little things or the big things, but one thing at a time about veganism. And the more like every day, the more you, um, look into it, you know, you get deeper, deeper down the rabbit hole and find out all this information. And so I was pretty obsessed about learning all these different aspects about being vegan. And so it's not just about a diet, but it's about the way we are in the world. And um, one of the interesting things that I've uh, learned about is, um, you know, is about our language, which is so interesting because, um, you know, I'll probably talk about this sometime in the interview, but I feel that you, Fred, are um, a huge, hugely responsible for helping me make the transition. And you are um, someone who works, who studies language and teaches language. <laughs> and so it's really interesting. It became a very interesting um, subject, our language of how we speak about, um, you know, 
the phrases that we use and, and how we talk and how it's become these normalized cliches like killing two birds with one stone or mm -hmm. <laughs> things like that, that we just say, we you know we mean something, but when you actually think about it, why would we say something like that? Mm -hmm. And so now in the world, I mean, especially in the past five to 10 years, um, you know, every individual is able to have their own business and their own branding. Mm -hmm. And um, the, so I'm really interested in where words and phrases stem from. And mm -hmm. so the word branding itself comes from when people would brand um, animals or even, I mean, I, my history isn't really wonderful in this area, but people. Yeah, um, you know, I'm afraid brand, so. But, yes. Yeah, um, but, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of animals, they're still doing it today where they're yes. branding cows. Mm -hmm. And um, so we use that as a term for our own business. Like I'm branding my business, like this is the look and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm putting my stamp on it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I understand that as a concept, but I really don't like the tie. Yeah, um, I don't either. And when you business that I need that it's like referring to this this um, really cruel thing that's done to animals. Yeah, it's and horrific so, in every I, way. Yes, yeah, changed. I try not to say branding anymore, and I use um, aesthetic identity because mm -hmm. my when I brand, it's it's a visual branding, and mm -hmm. so I say identity more than um, branding these days. And I'm hoping that if I keep saying it, I can convince other people to say it. And then over time, the language will change. Um, yes. Because I do see people using different terms instead of saying killing two birds with one stone, they say feeding two birds with one scone. <laughs> Have you heard that? <laughs> no, I haven't, but I love yeah, it. Someone on the internet um, made a list of like all these um, cliches and phrases that we use that are uh -huh. abusive to animals or are referencing animal abuse and they gave an alternative to um what you could say and oh, uh, now I'll go and find the meme somewhere <laughs> but that was one of the ones that i remember changing killing two birds from one with one stone to feeding two birds with one scone and it's the same you're, you're getting the same message across we don't have to use this cruel language yeah Oh, that's cool. And scone and scone. Um, that's one one pronunciation option for this pastry, right? Yes. And I don't actually know if scones are good for birds, but the point is there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I like that it rhymes with stones. That's really good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you still have the link to that website. Would you send that to me? Yeah, it was a meme somewhere. Like instead of bringing home the bacon, bring home the bagels. Yes. Cool. Oh, cool. Well, if we find the link, we'll put it underneath the video. Okay, I'll try and find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I remember that you told me uh, if that if you wanted to design the cover for my book, I would need to tell you what I wrote. And I wrote it in German, so I couldn't just give it to you. And also, it takes too long to read. And so I do remember that you were very attentive when I told you about this. And then a few weeks later, you said, I'm vegan now. And that was so exciting. <laughs> Try not to cry in the interview. Um, oh, but th I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> well, can I speak a little bit to how we met? Because it, to me, yes. it's very clear in my mind how um, Fred and I took, both took Marie Forleo's uh, B School, which is an online business course. And um, one of the best things about the course is that there's this Facebook group and everyone, all the students can come in and ask questions and ask advice about anything they want in their business or sometimes even beyond business. And so there was a thread where people were talking about self-publishing and I was really interested in self-publishing. I had just made my first children's book and um, me and Fred, you and I met in, in the thread somewhere because you were looking to self-publish your essay and you maybe, I don't remember the question, but you were asking some questions about it and I answered. So you were just a name on the Facebook that I was answering questions to. And then we connected and then we decide, and then you contacted me for work and we got on Zoom. And Fred's in Germany and I'm in California. And so we have to arrange our times where we're either speaking <laughs> early in, the day, or in my morning and her night or my night and her morning. And, um, and yeah, and so in order, for her to explain um, what she wanted for a cover, she needed to explain what the book was about. And like she said, I couldn't read it because it was in German. I it couldn't even, I didn't even really understand what the title meant. Um, and so Frid um, described to me 
what her essay was about. And since it was about animal liberation, she explained all her reasons why she was vegan. And she wasn't, um, what I loved about this is that Frid wasn't pushing, you weren't pushing veganism on me, or in this conversation wasn't about me. You were just explaining your thoughts on subjects. And, um, and it was just undeniable. Like what you said was perfectly simple, and normal, common sense. And I couldn't deny that I agreed with everything you said, even though my actions at that time weren't, al weren't aligning with what you, you know, I wasn't actually doing the things that you said. I was like, she's right. <laughs> yeah. And um, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I, ha you know, a lot of people will sort of defend their position about not being vegan and come up with all these excuses. And that's just, um, I didn't have that attachment for whatever reason. <laughs> and yeah. so I didn't I didn't have any resistance to the conversation. I didn't take it personally. I wasn't offended. I didn't feel attacked. I was just, you were just giving this information and, and it, it just resonated. And I was like, I believe what she says. <laughs> what she's saying is actually, it wasn't something new that I felt. It was what I already felt in my body. Mm -hmm. And so I realized at that point that I was, that I had these core values and and they weren't aligned. And I was living one life while my core values were actually um, not really, uh, well, my, my, my path was not really in alignment with my core values. And I didn't even really know it <laughs> until, until I learned about the importance of animal liberation and how we should think about animals and all that. And so um, I was super inspired. And I don't, you know, during the conversation about her book, I didn't bring myself into it because it wasn't about me. <laughs> and so we just had the conversation. I probably didn't have much commentary on it. I was just the listener. And then, um, yeah, and then I we probably talked a couple of weeks later and I was like, guess what? I'm now <laughs> yeah, that's what's so beautiful. And, and it was so unexpected because, and that's what was so perfect. We, we connected, we liked each other. But it was all about the cover. You are the artist and I am your customer. And I need to explain to you what it is so that you can get the info. So we were both out of the picture. It was just about the art. Right. And we weren't having a conversation because of veganism. We were having yeah, a conversation. So it was completely non-threatening. And I didn't have an agenda. All I wanted is to give you information so that you could, you could help me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and then the cover, yeah, I, I loved it. And I, I, I love, I love the back as well. It's, it's so loving. It's, uh, it's my vision. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, and, I, and, uh, and, you know, we talk about animal liberation, but when I turned vegan, I felt that I liberated myself because you it described it so well, you know, like you had your core values and you weren't living them and you weren't aware of them. And, and that's what I've, felt after turning vegan exactly that that somehow a light bulb went on and it was just yeah I liberated myself I, I liberated my my compassion and my core values and 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 somehow I thought I was going to give a gift to the animals and then I realized I just stopped taking what belonged to them but I gave a gift to myself and uh, yeah yeah, so I I used to um, pra I, I used to practice yoga a lot more than I do now, <laughs> but I used to be I have a yoga teacher training, and I was really interested in learning about the chakra system at some point, mm -hmm. and so um, you know there was a lot of study about you know you have your chakras, and if you want to like physically look at them, there are these energy points throughout the body, and um, or you can even think of it as like your spine chiropractor, if something's out of line, mm -hmm. things aren't going to work so well. And so say your energy center points are like all sort of all over the place and yoga and Kundalini yoga are meant to bring them all into alignment. And then once they're in alignment, that's like liberation and freedom and, you know, in your mind and in your body. And so, you know, if you have a disc out of place in your spine, you need to put it into alignment, you're free. You now have freedom from pain, freedom of movement, all that. And so that's how I feel about being aligned with your actions mm -hmm. and your core values. If you're walking in life and you're, you know, really wanting to um, 
be good to others and have social justice and um, be a protector of the earth, but you're participating in things that don't um, match up with that, then you're living a life that's out of alignment. And you may not know. You may not know. And you're walking through life and you're like, you're doing okay, but you're a little bit off and you don't know it. <laughs> and then when you become vegan, or, you know, in this case, when I became vegan, my, um, all of a sudden the things that I was already, like I already considered myself an environmentalist. I already considered myself who was concerned about, as a person concerned about social justice. But while I'm participating in animal agriculture, those things just don't line up. And mm -hmm. so I didn't know I was in a, out of alignment, mm -hmm. but I was walking this path in my daily actions, you know, while speaking and thinking something else. And so when I agree with you, when I went vegan, the two paths merged and became one. So that's why I think of it as like the chakras aligning and finding freedom. Um, yes, it's like freedom for the animals, but it's, it was freedom for like, I want to say my soul or my spirit, you know, like my inside life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that became aligned. And so I felt this great freedom and liberation personally mm -hmm. by going vegan. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to bring something over. Hang on, I need to dash off. Okay. <laughs> Pick something up. Why? I bought your book. Oh, wonderful. I brought my book. <laughs> 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 yours. Oh, on me. And uh, so, actually, you started writing this pretty soon after you went vegan, didn't you? I did. I actually started writing it um, this almost while I was going vegan. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to backtrack a little bit before I had the conversation with you uh -huh. about your book cover. I had been exploring a, a vegan diet a little bit because in 2016, I was feeling really drained um, physically. And I felt like I couldn't, st I was having some issues where I felt like I was hungry all the time and I couldn't quite mm -hmm. get satiated. I felt like something was sort of burning my energy more mm -hmm. than it needed to and I was feeling fatigued and I felt like I shouldn't feel like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should feel better and I'm not quite sure what the problem is. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking into diet because I feel like, you know, nutrition is the thing that's going to um, heal us most out of everything. Nutrition, you know, there's other things like sleep and exercise, but nutrition is a huge part of um, taking care of yourself. And so I started doing some research about diets and, um, and everything was pointing to a vegan diet. And mm -hmm. then I, I felt like I was in this state. I started tapping at that point. I was doing EFT tapping. And I felt like the tapping was um, sort of opening, opening me up in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like it was, how do I describe it? I felt um, like it was leading me to things. Like it was sort of opening up something that was making things come to me. I don't know how to describe it, but mm -hmm. I felt like things were coming towards me that I needed after being oh. open up, after doing some EFT tapping. And mm -hmm. I was in the library one day and they were having a book sale and uh, Chris Carr's um, Crazy Sexy Diet was there for a dollar. And oh, wow. so I, I bought that book and I brought it home. And so I was already interested in Chris Carr and her path and a plant-based diet based on health reasons. And so I was already like, um, I'd say like 90% thinking I was going to go on a plant-based diet. And mm -hmm. there was a couple things that I was holding on to for my, um, you know, palate pleasure, mm -hmm. which was I really loved honey in my coffee and I really loved toast and butter. And so I, you know, I had considered like, well, what if I'm like almost vegan and I just have honey in my coffee and butter on my toast in the morning and that's it. And so that was like kind of where my mind was going. And then when I had the conversation with you, I realized um, that there was a difference between just having a plant-based diet and being a vegan. Mm -hmm. And so you helped me see that distinction. And so when I made the decision to go vegan, it was the decision to go vegan. It wasn't the decision to just go plant-based um, or like include more plant-based whole foods in my diet. It was after the conversation with you, it was a bigger picture than just the food on my plate. Um, mm. But it does start with the food on the plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so when I made the commitment to go vegan, I, um, I thought I'd make a fun project out of it. 
Mm -hmm. And I decided to redesign my kitchen and Mm -hmm. I started keeping a log. And so the book really started when I started redesigning my kitchen, which Mm -hmm. was the day I went vegan. Mm -hmm. It was on my uh, 44th birthday in January, uh, 2017. And that day, cause you know, on my birthday, that was actually something I wanted to do on my birthday. It may seem like a boring chore for others to like clean your kitchen and restock <laughs> it. To me, that was like actually what I wanted to do. I was like, how fun. I loved redesigning my kitchen. Um, and so while I was doing it, I just made a log of what was in my pantry, what was in my fridge. And then I just started, what did, I, you know, what was I making today? You just got to start with the day. What am I making today? And then what am I going to make tomorrow? And so I just kept keeping a log of the things that I ate that were um, practical and sustainable and easy to make. And Mm -hmm. um, the book almost wrote itself. It wasn't complicated to write the book. It was, you know, it was happening along with my transition. And because I'm already a graphic designer and a photographer, putting it together was, was pretty easy for me too. I mean, it did, I don't want to diminish the effort because it definitely took a couple years to get the whole package together and put it out there but it wasn't like a struggle of like what am I gonna write and how am I gonna do this and how am I gonna put the pieces in order it was all just there from Mm -hmm. my from my experience of and that makes it so valuable for readers I think that the book is really good for both new vegans to take the overwhelm out of it because you you show these baby steps and the recipes are wholesome yet very simple and affordable. But it's also good for very busy seasoned vegans. You know, I'm always really busy and uh, it's just a delight to get these very simple recipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I recommend it to, yeah, as I said, to both, you know, Um, it's, it's both, it's, and and then it's beautiful. I, I just love, I mean, obviously you are a designer and an artist, you know, you pick up this book and you see that it's, it's very tasteful, I think. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, so another thing I wanted to say about the recipes was that um, I think a lot of people have this idea when you say that um, you're eating a vegan diet, that somehow that's complicated. <laughs> yes. And, um, And that it may include all these other, a lot of um, complicated procedures or complicated ingredients or expensive ingredients. And I just didn't think that was true. And I didn't want to like, I wanted to work against that belief. I wanted to challenge that idea that Mm -hmm. if you went vegan, all of a sudden you needed to buy a $300 Vitamix spiralizer and um, I don't know, a dehydrator and... um, Mm -hmm buy like tons of nuts. I mean, organic nuts are expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and I wasn't, I didn't have all these things. I'm a minimalist. And, um, and I didn't, I don't have, I have one, um, a plug-in appliance. One. (laughs) It's one, it's it's an immersion blender. It's a smart Uh stick. And uh, that's the only thing I use. I use it to make pesto. A lot of things I just use a fork. I don't, you know, there's, I don't have a blender other than the immersion blender. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so the things that I were making were really simple. Like I could take some, um, a coconut and put some, um, maple drizzle, maple syrup and salt and stick it in the oven for five minutes and toast it up. And it was this like really delicious snack Or I could take strawberries and dip them in chocolate, um, Mm -hmm. vegan chocolate. And I had a plate of chocolate covered strawberries and this all felt super decadent to me, but it had like three ingredients and, um, not a lot of equipment and it was really simple. So the idea of this book was to challenge the idea that you needed to have expensive, complicated equipment and, and food to live a vegan lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just not true. You can, I've been living a vegan lifestyle for two and a half years and and it's I've probably spend less money at the grocery store and less time preparing my food Mm -hmm. and I definitely enjoy it a lot more (laughs) that's such a great and important point that yeah that it's it it's also affordable and that it's and that you don't have all these fancy machines and the fancy equipment I mean it's fun to have that but you don't have to have it 
Yeah. And I recently found, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I recently found a spiralizer at the thrift store for two fifty, and um, $2 and 50 cents. And my daughter loves spiralized raw zucchini. Oh, wow. I love zucchini and I actually like it cooked more than I like it raw, but my daughter doesn't like it cooked. She likes it raw better. And so if I spiralize it, it's fun and she'll eat a bowl of spiralized zucchini. Oh, fantastic. Um, look for things at thrift stores. Um, if you are needing any special equipment, mm -hmm. um, doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out and buy that hundred dollar spiralizer. You oh, can no. get $25 or you could maybe luck out and find another thrift store for two fifty. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, cool. And can I ask you about your daughter? How did she react to your diet change? And how how um, how is she responding to the things you cook? Uh, yeah, well, she loves she's, the zucchini. <laughs> yeah, she was six at the time. Um, she's eight and a half now. So she was six at the time and she, it wasn't, it was effortless. I mean, I'm the cook <laughs> and I, I mean, my goal during this, especially in the beginning when I did the transition was to make it seem like it was no big deal mm -hmm. and that there wasn't going to be a sacrifice mm -hmm. and that things were going to be like, I was excited try new recipes and mm -hmm. so um you know i made a vegan birthday cake for myself mm -hmm. and um, you know my daughter loved it and so she didn't have any sense of um she never complained or gave me sort of like oh could i please have this mm -hmm. um you know, sometimes we struggle when we go out to um we go to the first Friday art walk every month. And we've been doing this since she was a baby, since I was taking my baby out of the house mm -hmm. uh, in my little front pack, we would go to the first Friday or the second Saturday art openings. And so that's a big part of our lives. And mm -hmm. they always have a food display. And mm -hmm. so, and that was exciting for her, the food table, you know, whether yeah. she liked something on it or not, I just think the idea of it was exciting for her. And yeah. so sometimes this is like, it's full of cookies and, and beautiful, this giant crow just landed on the roof outside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's like eats cupcakes with frosting, and it's it's a little bit of a struggle because it's like this, um, you know, this what's the word I'm looking for? But this like this beautiful display that that I'm now not going to let my daughter touch. You know, <laughs> it's a little struggle sometimes. Um, you know, and I've sort of wavered of how I've dealt with this. There was. Mm -hmm. um, times and I was just like, I'm just going to let her have the cookie and not worry about it and mm -hmm. um, not like make a big thing over it and enjoy mm -hmm. our first Friday and, uh, yeah. you know, not torture myself because I let my kid eat a cupcake. And then I've either had other times when I've just been stricter and I've just been like, you know what, we're not going to participate in this because mm -hmm. that's not something I want to participate. And if I teach you that it's normal, you're going to think it's normal and the system of normalization is going to continue and that's part of my goal is to break these um, systems of normalization for things mm -hmm. that maybe they're normal but it doesn't mean they're right yeah. and, so, and so for a while I stopped I think the last time we were out I did let her have a cookie so <laughs> I haven't been consistent but you know I'm I'm learning but um, I'm a little bit more I think at first I felt uncomfortable in certain situations with other moms, um, you know, like, oh, can she have this? And I felt like I was being the, um, you know, party pooper mom yeah. saying, no, you can't have yeah. that like, woman in our, in her class at school, um, you know, was asking me, it was her daughter's birthday. And so she wanted to make cupcakes for the class. And so she asked me, is it okay if I make cupcakes and I'm going to be using eggs and milk and, you know, and serve them for the class and Evelyn had one. And um, I, I told her I'd let her know. And mm -hmm. uh, my, you know, my people pleaser wanted to be like, oh, it's fine, it's no big deal. She, you know, <laughs> you know, just yeah. soften the whole thing up and make everybody feel comfortable. Um, and then later I was, I just told her, no, I'm not, I'm not okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not okay with Evelyn having eggs. Mm -hmm. oh. And then the mom ended up, you know, doing chocolate covered fruit using vegan chocolate and bringing it in. Oh, that's um, really sweet. Yeah, yeah. So it was nice that she considered me. I mean, she could have made something separate for Evelyn or, or something, but um, I'm getting more comfortable just saying, no, 
we're not, a, we don't do that. And having that just be okay, instead of feeling like, oh, I'm the, you know, the sore thumb, <laughs> or whatever you want to yeah. say. Yeah. I'm the party pooper because I'm saying no. Um, yeah. But another way that I dealt with it, you know, I've dealt with it in other ways before being vegan. You know, I didn't let, when Halloween came around, I remember the Halloween before I went vegan. Um, I don't let my child have Twix or Snickers. Those are all American candy bars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, I ate so much candy when I was young. I had like nerds and um, there's these little candy balls and pixie stick. Charleston shoes. I ate a lot of crappy candy. <laughs> and so as an adult, when I changed my ways, I was just like, there's no way I'm letting my kid have all this candy. And, but of course I don't want my kid to be like, my mom's not letting me have the thing I want. You know, of course I love my daughter and I want her to just think I'm the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> I don't care what anyone else thinks of me. I want my daughter to think I'm cool. So I'm here to please her. And, um, but what I would do, we'd collect this whole bag of candy for Halloween, and then I wouldn't let her keep it. I would just be like, wait, you can collect it if you want. Like, we were at some event where they were, you know, you'd go to a station and then get some candy. And they're like, if you want to collect it, you, you can, but I'm not keeping it here. And when we get home, I'm going to make you a really good chocolate vegan cake. And, um, and she was okay with that. This is when she was six, and she, she accepted that. She was like, fine. And we went home and I'd make a chocolate vegan cake and, um, and she was happy and she didn't have any, there wasn't any resistance mm -hmm. or, or re resentment, <laughs> which I'm happy about. She didn't have any resentment towards me from changing her diet. And now she, she's proud of me and she tells me how proud she is of me for being vegan. Oh, and, and she tells everybody else that she's vegan. And when we're at the park, um, you know, this, we were at the park the other day and this mom brought out snacks and Evelyn told her, you know, oh, my mom's vegan. So I'm, you know, I'm not sure what you brought. She really wanted snacks, but she also wanted the mom to know that if she had some, that they needed to be vegan. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, she's understanding. It's, it's, you know, I think it's a lot for, a, definitely a lot for a six-year-old to comprehend. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's possible. And I like to give kids a little more credit than maybe our society. Yes. A lot of people think like ch children can't make their own decisions and they don't have the, you know, right to choose. And, um, and I don't agree with that. I mean, there is yeah. beautiful girl, um, Genesis Butler. Yes. She decided, I think at five years old, she asked her mom where um, her chicken nuggets came from. And her mom told her, and she was like, well, I'm not eating chicken nuggets anymore. Mm -hmm. and, then, and that mom, I don't know the mom's name, but what a wonderful woman to respect yeah. her five-year-old food choices. I know yeah. some moms that, um, that told me that their kids don't want to eat meat but they serve them meat. and that just that kind of doesn't that kind of rubs me the wrong way I don't want to get into criticizing moms or anything but I don't really support that approach um but then when Genesis Butler maybe I don't know if it was like six months later or the next year she asked her mom where her milk came from mm -hmm. and her mom also super cool woman told her the truth of of where her milk came from and how um you know I'm not going to get into the whole story of dairy right now, but um, point being is that her mom respected her choice to not do it. And then her mom became vegan and then the whole family went vegan. I and, think um, that's a wonderful yeah, story. Look up her TED talk, Genesis Butler. Um, you know, all you got to do is put Genesis Butler TED talk and you'll see her talk on climate change and veganism. Mm -hmm. And she's an amazing activist and she's now, I don't know if she's like 10 or 12, but you know, she's a young girl. And uh, there's also other young vegan activists like uh, Angelina for the Animals, who's from Staten Island. So cool. I have, I'm from New York and I had cousins in Staten Island. You know, I used to visit them growing up. And, um, and I'm like, oh, this little girl, she's so adorable. And she's like going to these animal marches and speaking out. And um, she's really mm -hmm. making and I think that's so beautiful. I, I just love to be able to give credit to children who are standing up and, um, you know, speaking up for themselves and for others that they it's have. Amazing. It's amazing. And I think it's, it's wonderful that they are, you know, when, when I was very young, I actually felt uncomfortable. Um, I saw, um, 
bunnies getting killed and I didn't want to eat the meat. And, you know, if my mom had said, you don't have to, um, that would have been so liberating. I, I was very shy and, you know, those, the times were different and I was an obedient, um, <clears throat> docile child, you know. Um, but I think children are much closer to to real life and nature and animals and much closer to their their compassion and sensation we we train them out of that so yeah, yeah. and yeah. and uh, we, we confuse them we tell them like that thing of being an out of alignment we teach we're teaching and telling them one thing while we're serving them a diet exactly exactly i mean we tell them involved and a lot of injustice i mean it's hard to see it and you can't it's hard to say, oh, that one piece of meat, how is that causing all this crazy injustice? But when but you is. start to learn, it mm -hmm. is. It's not it is. just your health. It's not even just the animals. It's no. the planet and it's other people. I mean, one of the big things that keeps coming up in my mind is how all the food that we raise, I mean, all the food crops that we grow to feed livestock, mm -hmm. um, could feed the world. If we stopped feeding all the food we grew for animals to the animals and instead fed them to the starving children in countries that are, um, you know, not financially um, stable or abundant, um, mm -hmm. you know, we could help other people, but we're choosing a different route and it feels unjust to the people who are starving. Um, it's horrible. I, it's so, un unbelievable. There is enough food in this world. Nobody yes, knows. Yes, there is there are answers to the problems it's just yeah. getting the regulations to um to put them in place it's not like there's not an answer there's just resistance to the yeah. answer mm -hmm. um, you know, based on greed <laughs> and um and yeah. ignorance and cultural yeah. conditioning um but yeah i think it's really sad that we teach and i believe that this was probably something that really hit me when you were talking to me in um and during our first conversation about your book of how we have these like movies like charlotte's web and babe that like teach us compassion mm -hmm. for the animals and then afterwards we the grilled cheese and uh and bacon <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, like, it's confusing it's totally like doing two different things at the same time it's yeah. confusing the child um yeah so. i mean chicken run my kids love the movie chicken run you know <laughs> and then you you feed them you feed them these chicken nuggets you know and then yeah. and then we had these cute stories by a swedish artist um and uh, they're called mama moo stories and they're adorable and then mama moo is of course you know she talks and she has all these things she loves to go on on sleigh rides and you know she likes to clean the stable in the spring and all of that. And, and of course, nobody eats her, you know, and nobody takes her milk. Yeah, it's, it's, un, it's unbelievable. And, uh, and uh, yeah, as you said, we, we don't um, give kids enough credit, you know, for how smart they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's interesting. Oh, there are so many things to talk about. Um, you said that when you um, started really thinking about it, you realized that art supplies are often not vegan. The, the brushes. Yes, the I mean, it's, there's just so much to, to, to know. I mean, what we, it's something that's been so ingrained in our society for many, many years mm -hmm. that all these things are just normal. Like, so it mm -hmm. starts with the food, like, and then you realize, or I realized that, um, you know, I didn't want to be eating these, fo these foods anymore. I didn't want to be eating dairy or I didn't, I never really ate eggs, but I, I would eat them in things sometimes. It's, mm -hmm. it's not not justifying that at all for <laughs> myself, but when it was like hidden in a cake or something, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't, you know, it wasn't a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. Now it is. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have something like in a food and be like, that's okay. I don't know what's in there. Um, so yeah, so it starts with the food, but then you, but then you realize it's also in your clothes and you're wearing leather shoes mm -hmm. and you've got a down coat on and um, maybe a wool hat mm -hmm. and then that silk scarf. And then, um, and then you realize that your wallet's leather. Mm -hmm. and um, and it, you just keep finding, oh, well, is my, my pillow's feather? You know, mm -hmm. what am I sleeping on? And mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it was funny. I'm going to, just yesterday I was going through my um, kitchen shelf and I was looking at some old supplements that I had and I'm a minimalist. So I'm like, if I'm not using it, it goes, there's no need for me to store things I don't use in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking at the ingredients on um, the back of these two supplements that I had. One was just a turmeric supplement. It was just turmeric, <laughs> but in like a capsule form that I got before it little bit before I went vegan and the capsules are gelatin uh. and, and I hadn't been taking them. They had just been sitting there for, I don't think I took, maybe I've taken a couple since I went vegan, but I didn't, I didn't read the back of it. And so I didn't realize, but you know, barely anything, but just yesterday I was like, Oh, these are gel caps. All right. I'm done with these. I haven't really been using them anyway. They're just sitting there for I might need them, but I don't need them. There's not even it's like not that many left in there. Just let them go, move on. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, it's simple things that we use. It's just not necessary. It's just interesting how how there's how animals have been um, integrated into all these products. Like we can make gel caps made from plants. There's no need to make them from gelatin. There's no need. If we can make them from plants, why wouldn't we make them from gelatin? There's so much simpler, probably a more cost-effective process, if that's what it comes down to for the companies. Mm -hmm. It's probably more cost-effective for them to use plants. Um, yeah, and then I started looking into art supplies, and there's so much um, glue and dyes in the paints and um, canvases. You know, the canvas, even. It, they use like the um there's like gessos and like coatings that they put on and glue it's a lot of it is the glues oh. or coating they put on the paper that somehow involves like um a gelatin oh goodness me yeah i would never have thought that's on the canvas even yeah that's and so I, i'm so, i'm sorry <laughs> I'm no, no, but of course though the glue i heard that glue is made from bones yeah yes yes oh. and so i've i've let go of different things in art i used to be an oil painter and then at some point in my journey i was like i'm not doing oil painting anymore because the solvents that you need that you use are really damaging to me and the planet and so i was like i'm not doing oil paint anymore for environmental reasons and then I was do, using acrylic and then there came a point where I'm like, I'm not doing acrylic paint anymore because it's just this like plasticky stuff that I'm throwing out <laughs> eventually. And, um, and I have some supplies. I've all, before I went vegan, I had a lot of watercolor paper and I had a um, bunch of watercolor paint and you can actually find watercolor paint that's not, that is vegan. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the point is, is that it's just it's, you know all these things and you don't even think to think about it and then once you know then you can start you know eliminating them and finding another source mm -hmm. and, uh, it's not a big sacrifice to give these things up you just let something go and you find something else that's going to work better or mm -hmm. be good enough <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's it's it's, it's, it's uh, incredible you always have to read labels <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's not hard anymore. And, um, I think actually doing it is easy, but the, the, my, the, the mindset switch is so big that it's not easy. And at first everybody around you gets alienated, you know, and that makes it harder. And of course we're creatures of habit and changing a habit is exhausting. Even though the thing is simple, you know, I, I eat better food now, and I, I mean, I would be lying if I said I'm not sometimes overwhelmed, but it has nothing to do with veganism. You know, sometimes I just want to work more and I, you know, I, but I also want to eat well. And, you know, anyway, so I want to experiment with foods, but that takes time. And um, so sometimes I'm still overwhelmed, but it's being vegan is totally easy now. It's, I don't even have to think about it. And I read labels automatically. It, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's just... Yeah. Uh, a lot of the foods I prepared are home are whole foods, and so there's no label needed. There's, mm -hmm. you know, like last night, for I had the best dinner last night, and it was so simple and so affordable. I had, um, you know, four russet potatoes, and I baked them with a um, little bit of sunflower oil and lemon and rosemary. Mm -hmm. And then on my stove top, I cooked some leek and mushrooms mm -hmm. and sunflower oil. And then I mixed them all together and I had this giant bowl of rosemary to tomatoes with leek and mushrooms. And it was so, so 
satisfying and I just felt so good. And, I mean, that's a really affordable meal. And yeah. nothing came with a box. Nothing came with plastic. Yeah. Nothing came with an ingredient list. Um, you know, people have this idea that if you go vegan, all of a sudden you have to buy like packaged products. Uh-huh all these like bad ingredients that aren't healthy for you and it's just not true like mm-hmm. you can it was, it was funny I was at this I had an opening from my book um in July and um I was setting up for my opening and there was this older man who was um tending to the yard he worked for the place that I was <laughs> that I was having the um book party ad and so someone had mentioned him oh this is the woman that's having her book launch here tonight she's got a cookbook and um you know it's it's a vegan cookbook and he went you know he was obviously not a modern man and he was like he said vegan food (laughs) he had no concern about like offending me or putting his opinion out he went vegan food and I just laughed I mean I thought it was I had to laugh and I said you know and I kind of tried to make light of that I said yeah bananas and strawberries gross (laughs) that's all vegan food is like vegan food is just fruits and vegetables vegan means vegetation yes stuff that we grow it's strawberries bananas it's apples it's rice it's potatoes it's there's nothing they don't come in packages i mean some of them come in packages unfortunately but they don't need to (laughs) so that's another thing that i want to you know break the um the ideas Mm -hmm. shatter these concepts in my book of that like you don't have to um buy these make things complicated by being vegan it's not expensive it's not complicated it's not um yeah, adding any anything um, difficult into the, into the equation. So, <laughs> oh, you know what? That what you ate last night that would be a really nice meal for your food blog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes I'm you know as I'm eating it, I'm like, oh, it's so good. I gotta post it, but I don't want to stop eating. I'm like, oh, I can't, I'm just gonna eat my meal. <laughs> <laughs> but you <laughs> just stop to take a picture. Sometimes I do. <laughs> Sometimes you know, I'm just like I'm just gonna keep eating it instead of stopping. <laughs> but you you can uh, you can just post the recipe without without the photo. Yeah, well, in my book, I have rosemary tomatoes. I mean, oh, and, and do you have the the um the vegetables on there also? I in the book, it's I don't have it as a full thing. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's why I, I ate think it last night. And I don't, also don't do a lot of pre-planning for my meals. I just like what's in my fridge. I just see what's in my fridge and I see what's go- what goes together. And sometimes I make meals that are like really interesting and good um, because I don't have that much. That I'm sort of like, what do, what, what do I have? Oh, I've got time. I can put time in this and I've got this lemon and then I can, you know, use what I have and come up with something mm-hmm. great. You don't need anything extra or fancy or expensive um, to make amazing meals happen. Yeah, but you are also you are a great cook. <laughs> you, you, are, you know, you're an artist. I can tell. I mean, I haven't ever eaten your food, but I've seen the pictures. I'm going to make these next. Mm-hmm. I love chocolate. Chocolate zucchini. Yeah. Nice yeah, I'm going to make them, and then I'll post. I'll post. Uh, the product on it. Oh yes, let me know how they come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll do a Facebook Live about the bags as well. Yeah, and you know when my daughter was young, before I went vegan, I was making a lot of vegetable muffins for her <laughs> because I, you know, everyone, every almost every mom, I'm sure, goes through this stage where they want their kid to eat um, fruits and vegetables, and yeah. their kid wants to eat like crackers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I find. Yeah, well, I'm sorry for interrupting, but yeah, no, no. every mom wants her kid to eat um, fruits and veggies. I saw this thing where they said, um, moms always want you to eat your fruits and veggies until you go vegan. <laughs> yes, I saw that recently too. It was hilarious. <laughs> and then they ask you, where are you going to get your protein? Yes. <laughs> so Jen, where do you get your protein from? Oh, great question. Um <laughs> Oh, I, well, <laughs> there's, um, you know, protein's like the big question. That's where it's, I mean, I think people are actually starting to stop asking the question because it's almost becoming a little bit of a joke. Yeah, um, it like, is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what I, you know, there's so many things that I didn't know before I went vegan. And 
you know, some people go vegan and they don't do a ton of research and that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm just, that's just how I am. I'm one of those people that I get really, I got really interested in the subject and I just kept digging deeper and deeper. And it was fascinating to me, um, all these aspects that it covered between what, like I said, communication, the environment, it's just covered so much that I, I really wanted to know it all. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I found out was that um, we, there's this like huge emphasis on protein that's not, that's not needed. We don't need as much protein as, um, you know, the emphasis is that we don't need all that protein to build muscle or to be healthy. So mm -hmm. there's some, like extra protein that we have to have and we don't need that much. And mm -hmm. in actual fact, too much protein especially when it's coming from an animal source is actually a problem and mm -hmm. so we don't have to worry like oh my god we're lacking protein like protein is in so many things and in a lot of plants that it's not something we have to make sure we're getting if we're eating enough food we're probably just naturally eating enough protein mm -hmm. but um there's protein in quinoa. the highest sources come from um nuts and beans mm -hmm. So you could eat tofu, or if you're not a tofu eater, you could eat tempeh, or you could just go straight to the beans and eat black beans or chickpeas, or um, lots of seeds have proteins. Uh, did I say quinoa? <laughs> um, yeah, quinoa has, I think quinoa even has complete proteins, all essential. Uh, yeah, oh, chia. Mm -hmm. Chia is a really good source of protein, mm -hmm. and that was something that I'd never ate. I didn't even know how to use it, and it always seemed like weird to me, but yeah. I just made some chia I think you did too I think I saw a post that you just I made, made some yeah, yeah I made some oh, two days ago yeah, yeah I made well, a chia pudding that uh, Chris Carr posted yes and so I always thought that chia pudding was weird and I was like I don't know if I want to eat that it, you know it's funny because I grew up such a picky eater and food kind of freaked me out it's amazing that I am where I am today but I was always kind of scared of food it, like not all food, but so much food was weird and creepy to me that I was always having an issue. My, my mom was always like, what is, she, what am I going to feed her? What can oh. she eat? My mom's so <laughs> wonderful. She catered to me and she made sure that she found me things to eat instead of forcing me to eat things or giving uh. me a And um, I so appreciate it about her. Um, but oh, so anyway, I was like, I'm the kind of person where I do get kind of weirded out by some <laughs> And so I always thought that chi was really weird. It's like a texture thing of like, yeah. what are those things floating around and they expand? Um, yeah. I, this year I started working for the Living Light Culinary Institute and one morning for breakfast, they asked me to make chia pudding. And so I <laughs> looked up the recipe. I soaked the seeds the night before. And um, in the morning we made these beautiful bowls. They were soaked with water and um, almond milk, fresh almond milk that we made. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, we, you know, gave it a good stir and we topped it with fruit and granola. And, um, and it was amazing. It was delicious. And so I decided to try it at home. And um, it's really good. I mean, I just fill one mason jar and it's so I can't, I can't even eat the whole thing. I could just eat half of it. And um, it's awesome. You can put it in your fridge. It stays for a couple of days. It's sweet. If you use like a, like a rice milk and almond milk and other kinds of non-dairy milks, a lot of them are naturally sweet. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, or some of them may have a little sugar in them. Um, but if you soak the chia seeds in it, it's, it's, it's creamy, it's sweet, it's like, it's like pudding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Chock full of protein. So if you're really worried about protein, you could just have some chia, a little tiny bowl of chia every morning and you're set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about um, about your two websites, or should we do that on another day? Oh, I'll mention I it. Like that. I like that. I like it. <laughs> so, um, I have two websites. I, um, you know, as Fred said, I, I wear a few different hats. I'm a mom, and so that's like my main job. And um, and then my other job is I'm a graphic designer. I work for the Living Light Culinary Institute. That's my like local live job. And then I have two websites. And so one of them is Gembar, um, the official name of my business is Gem Barbado Design. And the website is gembarbado.com. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can find my uh, graphic design work. And so I design mostly logos. I love designing book covers. I design business cards, brochures, posters for events. And, uh, and I've been doing that. I went to college for that. So I've been doing that for a really long time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then my second website is jembarbadosvegankitchen.com. <laughs> it's a mouthful, but I've gotten used to saying it. Um, 
and I love that website. I've put, um, it's been like a non-pressure site. You know, my, my Gem Barbado design is, um, it's been my business. It's been the thing that's supporting me. And so it's like, it, it had to be a certain way. It's a little more professional and I'm dependent on it <laughs> to, um, you know, support myself financially. Um, but Gem Barbados Vegan Kitchen has been a side project. It hasn't been about making money. It's been more about my own personal um, contribution. It's like my contribution. <laughs> it's what I want to put out there and uh, it's changed a little bit over time and I'm really proud of it one of the things that I love I don't know if anyone goes to this page but it's my favorite page on the site is my resource page and mm -hmm. it has um, a list of the best documentaries to watch mm -hmm. and also a lot of wonderful speeches and speeches that were really inspiring to me when I first went vegan to solidify my reasons and to learn more speeches from James Aspie and Philip Wallen and um, I'm forgetting uh, the other people's names are escaping me but <laughs> there's the TED um, talk by Genesis Butler there's stuff by Earthling Ed Ed Winters and so there's a whole list of speeches sometimes I find that hearing you know going on YouTube and hearing the speeches and be able to listen I remember so many times just still today as I'm like preparing my breakfast and doing dishes and sort of doing things that don't require my full attention where I can be taking in information, listening to these speeches. And so, um, you know, some people may think, oh, I don't have the time to learn about all these things about veganism. And I'm like, I am a single mom <laughs> and I'm supporting myself and my daughter and, um, and I don't have a lot of time to no. spare. And I, I fit it in. This year, I listened to the World Peace Diet, and that was a hard one to do. I kept starting the World Peace Diet on audio, and, um, and I couldn't get through. It's like 13 It's like 13 hours long. Yeah. And, um, and I, I couldn't get through it. Like, I'd listen to a couple chapters, and then I'd have to move on. And then by the next time I went to revisit it, I would feel like I had to start over because I kind of forgot where I left off. <laughs> and so one day I just made the commitment and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do all this work over the next two days. It was a day that my daughter was out and I had free time without her. And, um, and I just decided whatever I was doing that day, I was going to listen to the world peace diet. And then I just finished it in two days and mm -hmm. I listened to so I mean, every I think I don't think a day goes by where I don't listen to it, like a little bit of vegan information. And so I feel like if I can learn all this information, being a single mom, single working mom, um, who doesn't have family near? I don't have like my mom or like sisters or aunts that are just coming by and like watching my kid. <laughs> she has a dad who she spends time with too, and so I do have some time. But um, but I don't have more time than the average Jen. <laughs> no. Um, and so I feel like if I can do it. If I can listen and learn, and if I can afford to cook vegan, and if I can make it happen, anybody can. Mm -hmm. I've been vegan. There was a time when I, a couple of years ago, when I, uh, I had moved and I was in real financial hardship, and um, and I was maybe like the poorest I had ever been, and I was eating vegan, and the issue wasn't vegan. It was like, oh, I'm, it wasn't like, oh, I'm so poor, I can't eat vegan. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, I don't have any money. I saving up money for a security deposit or, you know, something for my rent money. It wasn't about food. Food was, was easy. So I was able to sustain a vegan diet through a move, through financial hardship, being a single mom. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't need to be privileged in order to, um, to live a vegan lifestyle. It yeah. It doesn't require and money and it doesn't require any extra money or any extra time because there's been times when I haven't had any time or money and somehow I was able to integrate it into my life mm -hmm. effortlessly. <clears throat> yeah. I often listen to stuff while I cook Yeah, and, and while I clean up. Yes. While I'm doing the dishes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of vegan speeches while I'm doing the dishes because I have, I mean, who, who doesn't have resistance to doing the dishes? Um, <laughs> I, I like cleaning, but I just have done so many dishes that are really not my favorite chore. And so in order to make it something I can get into, I'm like, all right, I'm going to put on a speech that's going to get my mind going and then the dishes will be done before I know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I use a lot of my dish, dish time to, um, to listen to vegan speeches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, this was interesting talking to you. You know, um, maybe we should uh, 
we should call it a day now. Yes. Well, thank I could, you so much for the conversation. Okay. Yeah, I could go on for hours, but sometimes I think it's it's better to break it up into separate pieces. Um, yeah. And I put I put the link to your websites under in in the description box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to say about Jim Barbados Vegan Kitchen. There's my research resources page, which I encourage everyone to go check out and watch some of those speeches and documentaries. And then I also have a page where I'm selling uh, my book. And I have another um, children's book about my silly cat. My cat's been sleeping here the entire time. I was hoping he'd stay for there. I wish you could see him. He's in the funniest position, but he's He's, um, you know, sort of blended into the couch. But my yeah, other cat, a little bit. He's all twitching. You guys are talking about him. Um, so I have a cute story about my cat, not this one, another cat that I had, and um, and my vegan cookbook. And then I have another page for my t-shirts because I make uh, vegan t-shirts designs on Redbubble. And mm -hmm. so you can find that there too. It's a pretty yeah. clear website. So when you go to jembarbadosvegankitchen.com, it's all right there. Yeah, and, and, and you actually do websites for other people, right? So if anybody... I do, yes. I only fire. work in Weebly, and so I do simple Weebly sites. I think my beautiful. Videos. Thank you. Yeah, and, and so actually people can get the whole package from you, right? So you make them a logo, you make them the website, you you can even put the merchandise into their red bubbles shop. So yeah, I've been doing it all for myself for many years now that now it's easy for me to help other people. Yeah, and you can even help people make their own cookbook, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just uh, talking to a friend and she started collecting all these recipes and she said, oh, it'll be so much work to do this. And I thought, oh, I have an idea for you. <laughs> I need to put you in touch with Jen. <laughs> Right. Yeah, one of these days I'll give you my recipes so that you can turn them into a beautiful cookbook. Oh, wonderful. And I think that's such a great idea. And then you can, um, there's like a legacy and you have your family's recipes, you can pass it down and it means something. It means something to your family. I mean, yeah, and it's I also favorite recipe. My father cooked and I, you know, even though she wasn't vegan, I still have this influence of uh, the, her Italian cooking that I still, you know, have in my life today. When I make stuffed mushrooms, I think of my grandmother's house and all of us sitting around her big table in Queens. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's so just... having a cookbook is a great idea and making it real to pass on to your family. I just love that idea. Yeah, and it's, you know, like my, my, my son, one of my sons is moving out now. Um, uh, the other one moved out last year. And so, you know, and he likes my food. So then it's nice to be able to say, well, these here are all your favorite recipes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well then, I'll put all the info in the description box. And thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. Oh, thank you so much, Fred. And thank you so much for all the lovely work you've been doing. And I hope to be continuing the relationship. Yes, same. <laughs> okay, well, have a wonderful day, Fred. Thank you.